Hello, everyone. My name is Heather Reynolds, and I'm a second year master's student here at Western. And today I'll be presenting some preliminary results on my thesis, which is Gunnison sage grouse use of wet meadows, evaluating habitat restoration success for a threatened species. Some of my first slides are sort of redundant, so I'm going to just like cruise through them really fast. Okay, so we have our Gunnison sage grouse here, and we know that I guess the magic number so far now has been 88% of the breeding population is found here in the Gunnison Basin. This is the most resilient population, so focusing management efforts here would hopefully help with species viability overall. These birds occupy the sagebrush habitat year round, and it provides different seasonal and life stage requirements for them. My project in particular is focusing on these wet meadows and riparian areas. Um, for the purpose of my presentation, I'll just call them wet meadows. So this is per in particular late brood rearing habitat. From a management perspective, late brood rearing season is about mid-June to mid-October, so that's where we were focusing. These wet meadows are absolutely crucial, in particular for the chicks and the juveniles, as Nate already mentioned. It provide, they provide an abundance and diversity of not just wetland vegetation, but also forbs in particular, flowering herbaceous forbs, as well as invertebrates. So it's the forbs and the invertebrates that are particularly important for the survival of these chicks and juveniles that will eventually enter into the breeding population. Um, these sites have been degraded by human influence directly on the landscape, which has been compounded by the issue of drought, which has been the common theme with this presentation. So I wanted to just focus a little bit on drought for my analysis in particular. And again, Nate already mentioned this a little bit, but I use the Palmer Drought Severity Index, which uses readily available temperature and precipitation data to estimate relative dryness. So the more negative the PDSI, the worse the drought years. And it used to just extend from positive four to negative four, but now that we've seen more extreme climate events, it goes all the way down to negative 10. 2018 and 2020, as you can see on that map on the right, that is the average annual PDSI for Gunnison over the last six years or so. And 2018 and 2020 were the most severe drought years. They're all in the negative, but those two years were the worst. Again, there's just been this collaborative effort to restore these wet meadows, which is fabulous. And there's been a huge effort for this restoration, but also the monitoring to come after that. So we've already spoken about the wetland vegetation monitoring. The change in the wetland vegetation is sort of the middle component that um, connects the restoration to maybe the grouse use of these sites. We have been able to show a positive effect of the change in wetland vegetation. So that is, all fine and dandy, but now the question is, what is the grouse response to these areas? So this leads to essentially the question that everybody's asking is, are grouse benefiting from wet meadow restoration and how do we know? Are they using the treated sites more over time? We would hope so because we're increasing value for them. So beginning in 2016, Nate Seward started putting out wildlife cameras on wet meadows to capture grouse response moving into those meadows. My study was truncated at fall 2020, and at the end of that, we ended up with 15 cameras there that were on treated sites, so areas that had those restoration structures, as well as 15 cameras that were on nearby untreated sites that had similar characteristics that could be used for comparison. And you can see these sites are scattered all throughout the Gunnison Basin in critical grouse habitat. So these cameras are set up in the meadows in particular to capture that sagebrush wet meadow ecotone where you would have the grouse dipping into the wet meadows to forage. And the ultimate question is, are they using the treated sites more over time compared to the untreated sites? So going just a little bit more into the study details, we were interested in grouse response as a function of three main things for my study. So the untreated and treated site type, drought, which we use the PDSI values I mentioned earlier, as well as time, so over the 2016 to 2020. For some perspective, this study overall has captured over 2.8 million photos so far, and only about 6,500 of them are grouse, so it's not a lot. We didn't just use raw number of grouse pictures as our response variable, but we were able to kind of refine it down into unique detection events. So as you can imagine, this one little grouse going through this area is going to have fewer detection events in our cameras compared to an entire family that's hanging out in the area foraging for a long time. So now I'll just show you just some raw data just so you can kind of see what the data ended up looking like. So here we have the grouse response um, with at the treated sites and then the untreated sites, and they're on their own scales here. 
One thing that is particularly interesting to me is that at both sites, they tend from year to year, they follow approximately the same pattern going up and down. So it seems like there's something that's overarching that is affecting response at both site types. 2018 and 2020 in particular, which I had mentioned earlier were the worst drought years, seem to have the highest response. And we'll kind of circle back to that. So what's really interesting is when we look at these two graphs on the same graph, overlapped on the same scale. So here again, we still have the treated and untreated sites across the years, but you can see how much fewer uh, pictures were captured at treated sites. And in fact, only about 8% of those original 6,500 photos were captured at the treated sites, which is a lot fewer than I initially would have expected. The second interesting thing is how drastic the difference is from 2018 and 2020 compared with, in particular, 2019 in the middle. So drought was that main factor that I was looking at for my analysis. And when we put that on top of this graph, the higher up the X is on this graph, the worse the drought years. So it seems that that may be explaining a little bit of this pattern. One year that's not really explained by the drought pattern is 2016, but we can, we're gonna come back to that a little bit. There's probably something else that's explaining grass response at the, during that year. So overall, when we, we did a mixed effect model and we were able to determine that grouse use wet meadows more in drier years. So as that PDSI value increases in negative value, so the more negative it gets, we're seeing higher number of photos and our response variable, which that does make sense biologically as we've sort of already touched on a little bit in that as the surrounding sagebrush upland dries out in worse drought years, they're forced to move into these wet meadows more, which would yield more detections from our cameras. Site type, um, the majority of our pictures were captured at the untreated sites, which is, again, maybe not what I would have expected. Um, so that led me to think a little bit more about their biology and what sites are they actually spending their time at. So I created this graphic, which has all of the 10 sites on the x-axis with our response variable on the y. And these three sites seem to really drive the results of the study. All three of them are untreated sites. Again, maybe not what we would have expected. So yes, they're using these sites more in drought years, but what is it about these three sites in particular that they're constantly going to no matter what? This leads basically to consider, again, their biology site fidelity. These birds we know are incredibly site faithful. And this might have just been a relatively short study for the target species. So it was only five years and that might not have been long enough to see a response in their behavior, a change in their behavior. So we think they might be exhibiting really high site fidelity because we know they are with lex sites. We know they are with nesting sites. So it makes sense that they are with brood rearing sites as well. And then the knowledge that's being passed from the mothers to the daughters every year would that's just going to ultimately slow down their response of moving into these areas, which we think are high value for them. So what are the right parameters for future management efforts? I know a lot of decision making goes into considering where we're going to restore next. So we kind of have like these two options in my mind where we can restore habitat and hope the birds move into it, or we can restore habitat where we already know that they go. If we choose this option over here, we definitely have to be conscientious of maybe not restoring when the drought year is really, really severe because we know that they need these areas more in drought years. But we could also be strategic of when we're actually doing the restoration throughout the season and maybe do it in like maybe October, like when it's a later month that they're not using these sites near as much. So ultimately, I don't think we really saw these grass move into this area because with the declining population overall, you're not going to see expansion into these sites. So that's another thing of why we might not have seen grass moving into these areas. But I will say a big takeaway is that we certainly should continue to restore wet meadow ecosystems because grouse are not the only species that use these sites. We've captured dozens and dozens of species at these sites. I could not even put them all on here. But um, increasing drought resiliency of the sagebrush ecosystem overall, and then also creating that wet meadow habitat for hopefully increasing grouse numbers to eventually move into is the ultimate goal. But we do know that drought is the overall factor, so we have to maintain our efforts to support this bird through this mega drought, as well as other wildlife.